man is Neil Tovey. Tovey captained the national team during the Africa Cup of Nations success back in 1996. He joins us now on the line from Durban to pay tribute to his former coach who died um, aged 78 after a long illness. Uh, Neil, good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. I think I've talked about the 1996 AFCON a couple of times today and you were not only part of that very squad but you also captained it. What was football like under the leadership of Coach Barker? Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, first condolences to the family uh, and the football world. And I say the football world, not just the South African football world, but, uh, yeah, um, playing on the club was, I mean, I had, I was really lucky to play under him as, as a youngster uh, in my early days in the 80s with, in Durban City, and then in Missouri, and also the national team as well. And uh, it wasn't... There wasn't any a time where it wasn't enjoyable. Um, you know, he, he first of all, he, he was a very, very, very successful coach. Every every team he touched uh, kind of turned to gold. And the biggest attribute he had there, I mean, a lot of people say, yes, he was a motivator and all that. And yes, obviously, that was a huge attribute for him. But he, he, he knew the game. Um, he can't do what he did win league titles and win uh, uh, AFCON without uh, knowing the game of football itself. And he, he didn't make it complicated. Uh, but above all, he every single player that was in his squad or his team felt loved. And that was his biggest, it was his biggest attribute as well, was that you, when you, you wanted to go to training, you wanted to, to play for him. And, and uh, you know, he made you uh, do what you did best. You know, we didn't ask Dr. Kamala to play like shoes or in shoes Kamala and uh, shoes and shoe to play like uh, Linda Botelezi. He made everybody play to their strengths by being themselves. And and, uh, and he was very, very good at that. And uh, so he, the, the camps were always, always very, very comfortable. And speaking about um, allowing everybody to play to their strengths, you know, I always say it's a different relationship when you're coaching a team. You've got a team um, of youngsters, um, you know, they er early in their adult life, they're still trying to, you know, figure things out. Some of them are still studying whilst they are playing sports. So it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing. You're almost like their parent, actually, whilst their parents are not there. So what was that relationship between yourself and the coach, especially considering that, like mm -hmm. I said earlier, you were his right-hand man? Yeah, I, as I said, I went back a long time with Klaus. So when when it was with the national team, you know, he, he I, I'd been with the national team from the start, uh, from 1992, from the first game. So Klaus kind of rode on 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 on, on uh, you know, we had chats about you know, uh, you know about thought processes and all that type of thing. And uh, so, but he 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 was a father figure for every single player in that squad. And he knew how to just to make them tick over and be happy in that camp. And because at times it mustn't be a hardship when you're playing for your country. I mean, you, you play for a country, you must love to play for your country. And that's what he did exceptionally well. And I think that's, that's what makes him stand out from a lot of the coaches that have been before him and after him. Uh, you know, uh, he, he made it really, as I said before, a really, really comfortable place to be in. You're in, you're in camp, you, you know, you're then training and then back in camp and traveling and and he never had a, he never made it any, any problem for anyone. He made it as simple as possible for everyone. Neil, speaking about um, feeling as though you want to play for your country, Bafana Bafana do have an AFCON qualifier next week against Morocco. What do you think their chances are? Do you think they can go ahead and win? Yeah, we played at home. We should, we should, we should command the, command the, the pitch and command the fixture, you know. And uh, and it be it must be used as a yardstick for for the Afcon because we all know Morocco has come out a really really successful uh, World Cup campaign. And but we we've got the measure of them. We we took them very very late into the game in, in, in the previous fixture. So there's no harm that you know. There's no reason why we. We cannot go out there and get a win and be positive about the game and, and go and play it like it should be when you're playing at home. 
Definitely. Neil, very quickly before you go, I think not enough is, not enough is being done um, in South Africa to celebrate, you know, our football uh, um, heroes. And uh, Coach Barker is part of a rich football history um, in our country. I mean, you yourself, you're a legend. What do you think needs to be done by South Africa to ensure that, you know, we document these things, we celebrate our legends? Yeah, a lot of them are documented, but, you know, we need to, when they're alive, we need to celebrate them more. Uh, and, I mean, Clive, Clive is, like you say, he's a legend. He's a legend in the field, you know. Um, uh, Mafana Bafana won the AFCON once. They've won it once. And who knows when, when it will happen again. And, uh, you know, um, he, he should be, you know, there should be statues of him. There should, there should be roads named after him. You know, uh, there should be more done for, for sporting heroes because you've got to create these heroes. And you've got to create people that, that youngsters should look up to. And Clive is certainly a person that, that all the whole football, all the football youngsters and all the sporting youngsters should look up to. Definitely. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to have to leave it there for now. That's former Bafana Bafana captain and legend Neil Tovey.